Hi again everyone. Today we will continue our discussion on meeting skills by talking about a few things that are required when you conduct a meeting. I'll begin with meeting documents. When you conduct a meeting, there are certain documents that are compulsory. And these are among the required documents. The first one is a meeting notice which is to inform all the participants of the impending meeting. The next document is a meeting agenda. Quite often, you will see that the meeting notice and the meeting agenda are combined into one document. Another document that is required for meeting is the minutes of the meeting. This document is usually prepared after the meeting. Let's look into meeting notice. A meeting notice is issued to notify meeting participants of an impending meeting. It includes things like the time, the date, the venue, and the purpose of conducting the meeting. You can refer to pages 112 to 114 of the textbook. Next, we will talk about meeting agenda. A meeting agenda contains the list of items to be discussed. It may include a welcome or opening speech by the chairperson, apologies for absence, minutes of the last meeting, and matters arising. Do take note that minutes of the last meeting and matters arising are only applicable if this is a subsequent meeting. So if you are conducting your first meeting, these two items are not applicable. Then you will have the main agenda items. This is the focus of the discussion and this usually is the main purpose of calling for a meeting. Once you're done with the agenda item, you'll move on to any other business and end with a discussion of the date of the next meeting. A sample of the meeting agenda can be found on pages 115 to 117 of the course textbook. So what should you do before a meeting? Firstly, you need to clarify what you are trying to accomplish. What is your aim? What do you hope to achieve? And you also need to determine if a meeting is the best way to accomplish this objective. And if that is so, should it be face-to-face -face or a virtual meeting? Another question that you need to look at is, who should attend the meeting? That would mean these are the people you should invite for the meeting. And how long will it take? Once these are determined, you need to prepare and send clear objectives, agenda, and logistic details to the meeting participants. If required, you need to prepare and share supporting materials ahead of time. For example, you might want to prepare a document showing the schedule of your opening ceremony to everyone. And finally, it's important to send a reminder to the meeting participants so that they could be there at the meeting. As you all know, a meeting is chaired by a chairperson and there are certain roles that a chairperson must carry out. First is to guide the meeting procedure. Next, the chairperson is required to start the meeting by welcoming members and greeting them. Once this is done, 
the meeting can be started, and the chairperson should set clear ground rules of what can be done and what are not allowed. Next, if applicable, the chairperson or this can also be done by the secretary to read and call out apologies. It is also the role of the chairperson to advise housekeeping details, such as how long will the meeting be and will there be any breaks in between. The chairperson should also keep to the agenda and the time frame of the meeting. One important role of the chairperson is to facilitate the discussion. The chairperson should also clarify actions just to ensure that it is clear what is to be done by whom and when. At the end of the meeting, the chairperson will need to thank everyone before closing the meeting. What about a meeting participant? So in this slide, you will see some of the roles of a meeting participant. Firstly, a meeting participant should make sure you turn up on time. You should also be prepared to contribute your ideas. Make sure you pay careful attention to the agenda items. You should always get yourself involved in the discussion. Remember to be courteous and do not interrupt others when they are talking. Where relevant, take note of items that require follow-up actions, especially if the item concerns you or your department. Once the meeting is over, there are still a few things to be done. These include sending out meeting notes and action items to the relevant participants, Review evaluation forms or feedback if they're made available. And identify lessons learned for future improvements. Now we're going to talk about the minutes of a meeting. It is typically the duty of the secretary to prepare the minutes of a meeting. The minutes of a meeting is prepared after the meeting is over to ensure that everything is recorded correctly. The minutes of a meeting is a document that details what were discussed, what were the final decisions, and who are responsible to follow up or take actions for each of the agenda items. Refer to pages 119 to 123 of the course textbook for a sample and format of meeting minutes. That's all for the online session today. Till next time, stay home and stay safe.